Having worked as a practice lead, I'm always looking at component libraries, especially those that are written in TypeScript, provide great documentation and are super easy to get started with. And that's exactly what my team provides, so let's take a look. We are starting off with an empty Next.js project, and if you are more curious about this particular template, I will leave a link to that in the video description. However, you are free to bring in any Next.js project that you might already have. Mantine provides a package called at Mantine slash next, which is dedicated to supporting the server-side rendering feature of Next.js. If you aren't using server-side rendering, for example, you are using simple create next app or Vite or simple webpack, you wouldn't need this particular package. Now the core functionality of Mantine is provided by two key packages called hooks as well as core, and we will save exact versions of all of these packages into our package.json. Now once this installation is complete, we have one additional step which is specific to server-side rendering of styles, and that is to create a custom document component for Next.js that will render all our server-side styles. We use the Menti Next package to import this function called create get initial props, use that function to get some initial props, and then return them as a part of our custom document, which simply extends the document class that is provided by Next.js. And that's it for the configuration, and now we can jump into the fun parts of using Mantine provided components. As a demo, one component that we can use is this text input component that is provided by Mantine Core, which combines the concept of a text input along with a text label into a simple unified concept. We run the application to see this component in action, and as you can see, it is pretty simple and straightforward. Now that's all well and good, but the one thing that I focus on whenever I look at a component library is to look at how they solve the key problem that everyone faces when working with UI design, and that is layout. Fortunately, Mantine has us covered over here with a number of layout components, and the simplest one among them is this component called the group. Fundamentally, it's just a nice wrapper over the CSS Flexbox layout. To start using it, we wrap our components within this group component, and then we can add as many children as we want to lay them out nicely, which is something that the group component will provide. Now, just like the CSS Flexbox, by default, it will lay out all of its children into a single row. And we can see that when we visit the application in the browser. Of course, it provides a property called direction, which we can set to column to lay out the children in a single column that is a vertical layout. Now, these vertical and horizontal layouts wouldn't be much use if you didn't have a property to control the spacing between the different children. And that is provided by the spacing property, which can take some well defined strings from within the Mantine default theme. For example, we can specify the value Excel to put an extra large spacing between the two inputs. This probably triggers another question in your mind, which is, how can we control the theme that is provided by Mantine by default? Fortunately, Mantine has us covered, and we can customize the theme with this thing called the Mantine Provider, which we can import from Mantine Core. We do this within the default app component, which is provided by Next.js. The app component allows you to provide a custom wrapper for any of your page components. If you are not using Next.js, this is something that you would do within the app component, which you are rendering within react.tom.render. We wrap the provided page component with Mantine Provider. We can also take this opportunity to modify some of the Mantine defaults, that is, should the global styles be enabled, which sets some things like the page background, as well as should normalize CSS be enabled, which is something that you can disable if you are adding normalize through something else. Additionally, the key reason why we are using it right now is that it allows you to override the default theme. For example, we can provide a custom spacing extra large value of 100 pixels. Additionally, we can use the theme object to modify the default color scheme from light to dark. And now if we jump back to the browser, we have our components that are definitely spaced way too much at 100 pixels, and our overall theme has turned from light to dark mode. Now, of course, there is a lot more to maintain. For example, it provides a large number of UI hooks, additional components, and even additional libraries. For example, a drop zone and a date picker. And we might look at some of those in a future lesson. My objective of this lesson was to get you started with Mantine so that you could see it in front of your eyes and start exploring it on your own. Thanks for joining me. Smash that like and subscribe for more content like this. And if you want to see more specific Mantine content, leave a comment below. And I will see you in the next one.